Welcome to Carbohydrates Part 2. We'll take a quick closer look at monosaccharides and um, review the idea of chirality that was first introduced with amino acids. Let's go ahead and look at glyceraldehyde, one of the simplest sugars. Right? So if we look here, it's a very simple three carbon sugar, the aldehyde at the top, and then we see the alcohol on the right, and then the terminal alcohol. So we remember from amino acids that when we have the horizontals, those represent the wedges poking out at us, and the vertical axis would be the dashes going back into the paper. And um, so that's drawn here as well, and so this would be the D glyceraldehyde. Now we can make, right, there's the mirror plane. We can do the mirror image. So now we have um, the two mirror images. So what is the relationship that we use to describe those? Remember, we called them enantiomers. And so now I wanted to use some models to um, help illustrate this idea. So remember, enantiomers come if we have a chiral carbon, and the chiral carbon, right, it has a tetrahedral carbon, and bonded to four different groups, four different groups, right? So we can see here we have a hydrogen, a CH2OH, an OH, and an aldehyde. So we definitely have four different groups. So Let's start with a, a very simple model and then work our way up to glyceraldehyde. So I'll put a little cover here and then we'll look at the two models. All right, so if we look at these, we can see, if we look from the side, right, that we have the mirror, they're mirror images of each other. However, the non-superimposable. If I try to overlap, I can get, we can get the purple and the reds to overlap, but then notice that the blues and the whites don't match, okay? Or if I try to, if I line up the blues and whites, then notice that the reds and purples don't line up, all right? So this is chirality. We have our tetrahedral carbon, and it's bonded to four different groups symbolized by the four different colors. And so these are referred to as a pair of enantiomers. Now we'll look at the glyceraldehyde. All right, so here we see, right, there's the, here is the chiral carbon bonded to the four different groups. So we have the hydrogen and the methyl group with the OH and the alcohol group and the aldehyde. So now if I bring in the other enantiomer, right, so now we can see there are mirror images. See, there's the two alcohol groups and the hydrogens. Up at the top we have the, al oops, the aldehydes. This is tricky. And then we have our alcohol groups. So these would be a pair of enantiomers, non-superimposable mirror images, and so we can see that the alcohol and the aldehydes are lined up, but then the hydrogens and these other alcohols won't. So they're mirror images, but they're non-superimposable. So that shows us that this carbon in the center is chiral. Okay, so let's go back to our notes now. And um, so if we wanted to, we could star that these are our chiral carbons. And so we would describe this as our pair of enantiomers. Okay, so now let's look at some of those sugars that we were introduced to in the last tutorial, right? Glucose, galactose, fructose, and ribose. And let's apply our knowledge of chirality. So we can see that sugars have a ton of chiral carbons, right? We can star them.
the ketoses tend to have one less because of the internal carbonyl. And then there's the riboses. Okay, so a little bit of review. Remember, the enantiomers are the non-superimposable mirror, mirror images, right? And that comes from having chiral carbons. Um, but what happens when we have so many chiral carbons? Well, that creates the possibility of a diastereomer. So these are non-superimposable stereoisomers that are not mirror images. So let's, um, let's look at these two terms and compare them to um, these various sugars we're learning about. All right. So first, let's look at the word enantiomers. So when we look at D-fructose and L-fructose, if we look right here, notice right, that if we put a mirror Right? That um, we look here, right? So there we have the reflection and the reflection and the reflection. And then this, this could rotate so we could make it perfect. But we're really focusing only on the chiral carbon. So we see for all of the chiral carbons that we have the mirror image. So the relationship between D fructose and L fructose then is that they are non superimposable mirror images. They are a pair of enantiomers. So now we'll look at an example of the term diastereomer. Now let's compare glucose to galactose. And remembering that the terms enantiomer and diastereomer have to do with chiral carbons. So we're just looking at the chiral carbons. So now when we look at glucose and galactose, we see, wait a minute. These two are the same, mirror, same, same, all right? So it's they're not identical, and they're not the full mirror image like we saw here with fructose. So glucose and galactose, they're an example of diastereomers, where we have more than one chiral carbon, right? So if they're all reversed, if they're all mirror images, we say they're enantiomers. But if only some of them are mirror images and some of them are identical, we call them diastereomers. Right? So this is two types of stereoisomers. And then let's um, remind ourselves what would be the best term to describe the relationship between D glucose and D fructose. Well, and from one of our earlier tutorials, we realized that they both have the chemical, chemical formula C6H12O6, but they have very different connections. So they are structural or constitutional isomers. So we have an example of stereoisomers and structural isomers in the sugars. All righty. So that concludes our tutorial on the chirality of monosaccharides. Uh, take time now to work a few homework problems to reinforce your understanding.